Well, the anti-Trump FBI texts keep coming, a lot of them. Texts between former FBI investigator Peter Strzok and FBI lawyer Lisa Page revealing extreme bias. The president tweeting out this morning, in one of the biggest stories in a long time, the FBI now says it is missing five months worth of lovers struck page texts, perhaps 50,000, and all in prime time. Wow. Joining me now is Congressman John Ratcliffe, member of both the Homeland Security and Judiciary Committees. Uh, Congressman, let's first go to something that Sarah uh, Sanders just raised, this, this, or at least was questioned about, this reference to a secret society. Do you know anything about that? I do, David. Uh, it's good to be with you. So, uh, Congressman Gowdy and I uh, spent several hours going over the newest batch of uh, text messages between uh, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. And I can tell you um, that there's a reference to a secret society, and that reference comes in the immediate aftermath of Donald Trump's uh, election as president. So it was, but was it a reference to a group of people in the FBI that were working hard to, to reverse what voters just decided, that Donald Trump be president? Well, again, secret society is not my term. That's the term yeah, that uh, I know. I'm asking you to used. read their minds, which is unfair. But it, but if you could extrapolate based on what other texts you have read. Well, again, so I, I don't want to speculate too much about exactly what they meant. But what I can tell you was there was a society that included at least those two uh, and possibly others that had more than just a bias against Donald Trump um, and one towards Hillary Clinton, but a manifest intent to act upon that. And I think that's reflected as you look at the aggregate of all of these uh, text messages. Is there anything that you have seen that would qualify as illegal behavior? Well, I'm careful. I used to be a federal prosecutor. Right. I used to accuse people of crimes, but I'm not in that business anymore. And what we do is uh, oversight as a member of, of Congress. But, but what I can tell you is, um, the level of bias here is so stunning and alarming. And when you start um, doing more than just uh, expressing a bias but acting on it, um, it certainly raises the question about whether or not they were able to influence the ultimate outcome of these investigations that involve both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, uh, Congressman Gowdy often says that uh, Lady Justice is uh, blindfolded and holds a set of scales. What you don't want is uh, the Justice Department to have their finger on the scale. So that's really the right. question that we have to continue to look at here is, were they able to influence the outcome? Well, it's pretty clear Peter Strzok was able to influence uh, Mr. Comey in terms of the language that he used that, that would have decided whether Hillary Clinton was innocent or guilty. But specifically with regard to Donald Trump, uh, the question of whether Andrew McCabe, who's the assistant FBI director was a part of this group, if you will, the secret society that was trying to undo the election of President Trump. Uh, should Andrew McCabe, if indeed it is he that they were referring to, because they were constantly talking about Andy, we saw Andy uh, during this day, during that meeting, if it was Andy McCabe that they were talking about, who was part of this, this secret society, should Andy McCabe step down as assistant FBI director? Well, again, I, I don't know whether or not that is uh, the same Andy. There is a reference to Andy as part of the uh, insurance policy or plan. Um, and so, you know, I don't know whether or not that's Andy McCabe. We haven't, in the course of our investigation, yet been able to determine who that is. Uh, there is a question whether or not the FBI has determined who that right. uh, is. You mentioned Jim Comey. I will tell you this, David. One of the other things that comes out of this text, I think Jim Comey's got a real problem. He testified very clearly that he made the decision uh, not to prosecute Hillary Clinton for the handling or mishandling yes. of classified information after her July 2nd interview. Uh, these texts, along with other emails that we've seen and other documents and other testimony, are inconsistent with his sworn testimony under oath. Right. So, um, you know, he either has to have an opportunity to come back and clarify that or to assert his Fifth Amendment rights. Very interesting stuff. John Radcliffe, thank you so much for coming in, sir. Appreciate it. You bet. Good to Thank be with you. you.